Hello guys, question, how to write Laravel code? The framework allows so many options in different parts of the application, including how to structure things, that often companies, especially with bigger teams, release their own conventions or guidelines internally or in public with recommendations how to choose to structure certain things. And in this video, I will discuss one of the conventions from Interaction Design Foundation. You can see the table of contents here on the screen, and I will quickly run down through a few things that I want to stop on this document. I will not read that in full because that would take hours, but in the description below, I will put a lot of links to both this convention and then a few more resources like my videos, courses, and courses from the community on the reasons why they chose certain approaches. And I found this convention while browsing jobs on Lara Jobs and found this one. So senior PHP Laravel developer with mission of the company and one of the links was to this handbook. Many approaches in this document are very, very opinionated for that specific company. So it's not necessarily something we need to learn and adopt in our projects. Some of those are debatable, but still let's read and discuss some of the parts. So let's start reading topic by topic with my comments and I will share links to my own resources and videos and courses related to certain topics. I will skip some of the topics. Some of them are niche or not that relevant or maybe I disagree with something. So first strategy, personally, I don't like such statements because they are vague and usually don't mean anything on the ground. But sometimes for broader perspective, if you have, for example, decisions what to choose, which design pattern or solution, knowing the strategy strategy may help you make the decision in one or another way. But let's get to practical stuff. So project structure, interesting topic about modules. This topic is pretty polarizing in Laravel community and Taylor was recently talking about that on the podcast that using modules comes kind of in waves, come and go. But what I liked in this case is they defined when to use the modules for large projects and specifically more than 100 models is considered to be large project. Personally, I measure the project size in two numbers, number of models, so this is correct, but also number of routes, routes or endpoints. So if either of those or both are in hundreds, this is definitely a large project in my book. For models, I would even go lower to like 50 models would be already quite big. With resources about modules, I can recommend recent course by Mateusz on Laracast, Modular Laravel, or the most popular package for modules in Laravel comes from Nicholas Widart called Laravel Modules, so I suggest to read the documentation. Next thing I want to stop on is model query. This example doesn't really illustrate why, and I have a separate video on that why I often use query, not always, but especially for bigger queries, this helps formatting. So then query is on one line and all the conditions are on separate lines with good formatting. Also, it gives IDE benefits. If you don't use plugins like Laravel IDEA, then model static may not autocomplete the methods, but model query returns the query builder instance, which has the methods like where and others, and it would autocomplete faster for you. The next thing I want to stop on is writing down methods in migrations. On Laravel Daily, we have an article from 2017, so it's seven years ago, where Taylor Otwell on one of the podcasts told that he doesn't really write down migrations anymore, because even if you make a mistake of some kind, you create a new migration fixing that mistake. So this is the philosophy of Taylor. Not sure if that changed since then, but since 2017, I personally adopted this approach and it worked for me pretty well. Down migrations could be useful locally, for example, until the feature is pushed to Git or deployed somewhere. Locally, you run migrate, run rollback if you did something wrong, and then that is useful. But in this case, this guideline kind of disagrees with that approach and emphasize that it should be possible to rollback failed releases. So I guess if something goes wrong during the deployment or if they want to roll back certain feature of the application in full, then the down method is useful. And also developer experience simplifies switching between branches. So what does it mean? Probably I will simulate the scenario that if you run the migration while working on one branch and then you need to switch to another branch, you have the database from branch one, but you need the scenario from branch two. So for that case, you would run migrate rollback. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure that it would work in all 
times. While working with a few branches and a few different database states, I'm pretty sure that the down method alone will not really help to resolve the conflicts in the database structure. So what do you think about this down method? We can discuss in the comments below. Next, query optimization. I like this list. First, eager load the relationships. I have a lot of videos about n plus one queries and eloquent optimization in general. One of the most popular article on that on Laravel Daily is optimizing all you need to know. So I will link that one in the description below. Next, process stuff in chunks. That is also a good advice. Utilize database indexes, obviously, and use caching. Finally, consider using Query Builder instead of Eloquent. And I also have a few videos about that on YouTube, and I will link that in the description below. Next thing I want to kind of debate, which I don't really agree with, but it's kind of a personal preference or preference of the team. And this is actually the whole purpose of that guideline for a specific company. So which approach that company adopts. So for controllers, they prefer single action controllers whenever possible. So one invoke method in each controller, which means they will have many controllers like show controller, edit controller and stuff like that. Personally, I would go for CRUD approach. So resource controllers whenever possible, because they're kind of standard in Laravel and many developers would understand them easily. And there was a great video by Adam Wathen called Cruddy by Design. I will link the video in the description below and also have a text based summary on Laravel daily for that. So I would go for resource controllers, which actually they do mention in the guideline a bit further. Next, use action classes. This became more and more popular in Laravel in recent years. And I have a few videos about that. Basically, just check the description below for many links for the topics that I'm talking about in this video. But basically, create one action, final, read only, not extending anything with one method execute or invoke in this case. So actions instead of service classes, repositories, or any other patterns. Then API design. This is important for APIs. It's pretty good to have standards because that involves how API works and also how front end expects APIs to work. So versioning your API is very important. And I also suggest to start from V1, then also use plural nouns for resource endpoints. And there are kind of standards for naming in APIs in general on the web. This is just implementation for Laravel, nested resources for relationships. So not just comments with article ID, but articles, then ID, then comments. And then use parameters for all the filtering. And there are a few packages for that. Also using API resources or DTOs in some cases is a good way to enforce the structure. And then there are more small or big rules in that document. I will not read that in full. Something like camel case enforcing or order of the verbs versus naming. It's kind of a personal preference, but enforce the guidelines of the same team, as I mentioned. Or for example, using arrays instead of separator. This is probably a good rule of thumb because it's more convenient than to use custom validation rules with classes here but it's not a strict rule. It's just a guideline. There's nothing really wrong with someone using this syntax. On the other hand, there's a saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. So such document is for adopting habits to avoid questioning yourself next time you tackle that situation. So which syntax do I use? You just get used to one of the syntax options and move on using that in all the projects within that company and maybe in your own projects or in future companies. And at the end of this document, there are materials and one of the materials is SPITE guidelines. So this is another similar document that you can learn from, but from another company and you can actually compare approaches and find differences because, well, different people have different habits, same with companies. So this direct link will lead you to the repository that has been archived. But if you just Google SPITE guidelines, you will land on this and SPITE as a company has guidelines for quite a lot of things. Laravel and PHP is just one of the guidelines. And you can see how Spati prefer to write their code. So I advise you to read both of those actually documents in full and maybe you will learn something to adopt in your projects. And we can discuss any of those topics in the comments below. And if you want me to shoot a separate video discussing deeper one of the points, also shoot in the comments. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.